Okay, good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to tonight's meeting of the Committee of Adjustment. And we apologize for relocating our meeting. There's other equally important business in the town, and we got bumped from council chambers. So this is a meeting to consider application for minor variance of consents held under the authority of the Planning Act of Ontario. Please keep in mind the intent of our process is to review the proposal that's before us, listen to all the evidence, and then make a decision. Uh, the process is not intended to be used to resolve any concerns or disputes that may exist between the town individuals or any other organization. If a request for a deferral is made this evening and the committee grants it to require, the committee, after consultation with the Secretary Treasurer, will set a new hearing date. No further notice will be provided unless there are changes to the application. In order to conduct an effective and efficient hearing, we've adopted the following process. The owner or authorized agent will be given the opportunity, if so desired, to briefly explain to us the basis of the application and answer any questions that may arise out of the hearing. The maximum of five minutes will be provided for this presentation. You need to state your full name and address for the record, and any material submitted to the committee for viewing will remain the property of this committee. Any submission beyond the five minutes will be at the discretion of this committee. All persons attending the hearing who wish to support or oppose an application must also state their full name and address for the record. A maximum of five minutes will be provided to make your presentation. All remarks and questions are to be directed to the chair of the committee. Any submission beyond the five minutes will also be at the discretion of this committee. If there are several speakers that share the same view, we ask that you please select a spokesperson to present the group's combined opinion. We want to hear all the views and uh, collect all the evidence, but repeating the same uh, points does not uh, help us to arrive at a quicker decision. The owner or agent will then be provided with further five minutes to respond to comments made by any interested parties and answer any questions from the committee members. If the owner or agent has any questions or any concerns found in the staff report, particularly with any of the proposed conditions, this will be an opportunity to advise us. The matter will then be taken to the committee for a decision and that will mark the end of all discussion from the floor. Once our committee makes an oral decision this evening, any person desiring a copy must file with the Secretary Treasurer at this meeting a written request for notice of decision. We provided a green sheet to uh, the right here at the side um, for this purpose. Please note that you must make your written request in order to be included on the list that is used by the Ontario Municipal Board for the giving of any subsequent notice of any appeal. Written notice of our decision will be mailed not later than 10 days for minor variance and 15 days for consents the applicant, the owner, and or agent, and any other person who filed a written request for such notice. If you do not agree with the committee's decision, you may appeal this to the Ontario Municipal Board. The last date to appeal the decision to the Ontario Municipal Board will be noted on the decision itself. If no appeal is uh, received within the prescribed time period, the decision of this committee becomes final and binding. Secretary Treasurer will then notify the applicant through subsequent written correspondence. People attending this committee meeting are to be courteous to respect and respectful members of the committee, town staff, and other people in attendance tonight. And tonight's meeting will be live streamed and available for future viewing on the town's live stream page at oakville.ca backslash live. We ask that uh, we put all our cellular phones and pages in the uh, off or our silent position so we can ensure our tape proceedings are properly done. <clears throat> okay, so there's no regrets this evening. Anyone have a declaration of any pecuniary interest members? Seeing none. Okay. Um, so we have uh, two. Is there anyone here to withdraw now? Not to withdraw, to defer an application. Anyone here to defer tonight? Okay. Whoever would like to come down first. Just as you're proceeding, we have two applications that have been withdrawn. Come on down. Sir. A CABA 25 2018 at uh, 1292 Lakeshore Drive. Anyone here for that application? Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, Lakeview Drive, thank you. Someone's listening. So that's application CAVA uh, 25 2018 at 1292 Lakeview Drive. That's being withdrawn. Anyone here for application CAVA 28 2018 at 2430 Old Bronte Road? Okay, that application has also been withdrawn and we'll note that on the record. And now we'll deal with uh, deferral request, sir. Yes, thank you. Uh, my name is Rick, uh, Rick Matelja. My company name is SNDA. I rest at 79 Wilson Street, uh, Suite 301, Oakville, Ontario. Uh, we're agents for uh, Mark Verdun at uh, 472 Patricia. And uh, we've recently, recently received, uh, received comments from town staff that indicate that they have some, um, some concerns with the application and would like the opportunity to uh, address those, those concerns. So I'd ask that, uh, that we could, uh, could, could uh, defer this matter to give us time to do that. Is there anyone here this evening that has an interest in application CAVA 32-2018 at 472 Patricia Drive? Okay. <laughs> okay, so... My name is Anna Nopan. I'm the 
owner. Just well, okay. We're 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 dealing with no. Come come on up, come on up, so we can get your name. We're dealing with a deferral request. I know. Okay, so uh, this is one of these circumstances where unfortunately everyone's dragged down for a meeting, and uh, it's an inconvenience. But at the same time, the applicant just probably received the comments on Friday, and they're trying to wrap you know grab their heads around it. So we normally. Uh, offer a first deferral, but I want to hear any concerns you have with the deferral. Not with the application, with the deferral. Oh, I have no reservations with the deferral. Okay. All right. We have a concern with the application. <coughs> All right. I'll, I'll get to that in a minute. Can you we have your name and address for the record? It's Anna Nohan. Okay. I reside at 476 Patricia Drive. Okay. Thank you. And I'll have a comment on the deferral and what should be done. Anyone else? But, sir, we, we're gonna we, we're taping these proceedings, so you'd have to either come up and give me your name, or reserve when the matter comes back forward. It's up to you. And then you, sir. Yes. Uh, Gordon Highbrand. I'm at 479 Rebecca Street. Um, my only question is, um, if it's deferred, does that mean that we're not considering the application at all today? Correct. Okay. Correct. So we should withhold our comments at this time? Correct. Let's deal with the deferral request, which is a higher priority of uh, consideration. And then if the matter for some reason is not deferred, then we'll get into the application. We'll, we'll answer you had a, I answered your question? Okay, thank you. Members, sir, um, what, what, if this matter is deferred, when will it likely come back on again? It's April 10th? April 10th. April 10th. Yeah. So uh, I need your assessment from uh, what you've seen is April 10th give you the uh, sufficient time to uh, recalibrate whatever you need to recalibrate. And particularly because I think you had a show of hands to here and a gentleman there, that they should be consulted before you leave tonight, get their name and address, and see if you can meet with them and uh, discuss their concerns. I have a question. What is the rationale behind the difference? Well, the rationale as we heard. Yeah. Well, opposition to variance three and four. Right. So they so they read the staff report. There's opposition, and they want a chance to address it. Sometimes it means reducing it. Sometimes it means eliminating it. Sometimes it means nothing's done, and they come back. We don't know, but there's a whole range of options. So when was that report provided to the applicant? Um, on on Friday, which is which is uh, which is the report. Yes. Well, this is norm. This is a normal turn of events. Sometimes, unfortunately. Reports are available the Friday before the meeting, and then you get the weekend, and then you have Monday to try to scramble to get an answer together if you could, and then by before you know it, it's a hearing date on a Tuesday, and unless they have some miracle they can do between Monday and Tuesday, normally a deferral is what occurs. And there's a penalty for deferral in, 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 in the sense that there's a fee. So there's no incentive for people to defer. That's interesting, because I just personally spoke to the applicant on Sunday at my front door which would lead me to believe that he got the report on Friday, he was aware of all the variances, and he was looking for my uh, approval. Right, so I guess you were par part of the reason why he needs a deferral, because you weren't given his approval, and he figured I better defer it to see if there's something I can do. I'm only speculating, okay. but this is some things that we normally hear, it's not a, out of the realm of uh, the ordinary. Well, it's a common in the sense that uh, you're trying to resolve things. Uh, you don't know what the opposition is in advance, and then when you hear the concerns of neighbors and staff, then you try to uh, recalibrate if you could. So this is a recalibration. Uh, members, any questions? Uh, all in support of the deferral request? Okay, sir, your matter will be deferred for April 10th. Yes. You had mm -hmm. first-hand uh, knowledge of the people that are here, and we encourage you to maybe step outside, exchange uh, phone numbers, and figure out events so you can proceed in a harmonious way. Yes? Uh, through you, Mr. Chair, I just wanted to clarify, especially for those in the audience, should the applicant wish to have discussions with planning staff to address some of those concerns, uh, it is possible that it would not be returned to the Secretary-Treasurer in time for the April 10th meeting. Um, so, new notice would be issued uh, by the Secretary Treasurer when it does return if the application is amended in any way. So, we just want to make sure that the residents are on notice of a potential delay in bringing it back to the committee. We, we always advise that it's going to be scheduled once they bring the drawings, tracks, and everything, mm -hmm. then it's going to be scheduled. I have another question. How 
how long does it take before the revised blueprints are available to the public? Well, this is what we were saying. This is a question I asked the agent if he feels that it is a sufficient time between now and April 10th. Uh, and we don't, uh, we, we have suggested that uh, the next available hearing date, if the matter is deferred, and it has been deferred, is April 10th. There's no guarantee that they'll be on the April 10th. It all depends on how quick the applicant is able to revise the plans. Obviously, they need to engage in the discussion, both with uh, yourself and others that are here and planning staff, and that might delay it. It might not be April 10th. It might be April 24th. So at the moment, everyone is uh, aiming for the April 10th date, but it may not occur. Uh, but uh, presumably there will be changes to the application and that will trigger a new notice and that new notice will have a hearing date on it. So the earliest it could be the 10th, but it could be later. Okay, thank you sir, thank deferred, you. and uh, like I said, I encourage you to discuss. Thank you, neighbors. Thank you. All right, uh, we have uh, another hand here. My name is Dylan Dewsbury. I'm from Design Plan Services and representing the owners of 89 2nd Street. 89 2nd Street, the application CAVA 27 2018? Yes. And sir? Uh, we're requesting deferral uh, as per the staff's recommendation to deal with uh, heritage matters. Okay, anyone here for application uh, CAVA 27 2018 at 89 2nd Street? Yes, sir? I live directly across. Okay, I apologize, but but uh, we have to be a little bit formal in the sense that we need to record uh, name and addresses for the record. Plus, we have this marvelous technology here that we got to get everyone on camera for future prosperity. My name is Roland Clark at 88 2nd Street, directly across the road from the subject property. Okay. And I'm here tonight to find out more about what's going to happen here. At on the site. Okay, well that's 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 excellent and again we apologize for bringing you out. There's a deferral request because you may have read the staff report and they have I some concerns. I haven't concern. seen the staff report. Oh, okay. Do you, do you have access to the internet, sir? Uh, unfortunately, we couldn't get into it, so. Okay. Um, I'd like a copy of the A copy of the staff report, report. yes. I think I can give you mine because it's being deferred. Okay, so we'll get you a copy of the staff report and this fine young gentleman here who's asked for a deferral request, you and him are going to exchange uh, telephone numbers and contact information. Thank you. And uh, he will keep you uh, well informed. He'll tell you exactly what's happening or where it's going to go. So this is CAV. Uh, we'll just put the number here, 027-2018. Uh, members, you're all in agreement with the deferral request? So all the support. So your matter will be deferred again. There's no guarantee that it's April 10th. That would be the earliest, but likely the agenda's filling up. It might be later than that. We would defer to the uh, staffs. Um, right. Yeah. You have to go through the assessment, and you have this yeah. fine young gentleman here that you have to deal with. That's right. Okay, so before you go, make sure I've you make contact. Um, I'll just stop. Thank you. Okay. Matter is deferred? Thank you. All right. Thank you. Anyone else? Okay. Okay, we got six matters to deal with tonight. We'll start out with CAVA 26, 2018. This is a 356 Sandhurst Drive. Good evening, members of the committee. Mr. Chairman, my name is Richard Mann. I'm the architect for the owners at 356 Sandhurst Drive. I live at 153 Woodhaven Park Drive in Oakville. Okay, thank you, uh, Mr. Mann. Uh, is there anyone here this evening that has an interest in application CAVA 26 2018? Okay, members, are you um, done your site visit? You read the staff report, you studied the plans. Just for those that are here for the first time, our procedural bylaw allows us to dispense with the full public presentation where circumstances weren't. Uh, this application is being recommended for approval by staff, uh, subject to certain conditions. Unless there's anything else you wish to add, Mr. Mann, we can take this matter to committee and issue a decision. I have nothing further to add. Thank you. Okay, thank you. We'd like to move a recommendation on application CAV 26 2018. Uh, Mr. Chairman, having conducted my site visit, reviewed the applicant's written submission as well as the town's written staff report, uh, and taking into account that there are no comments uh, from the public. Um, I find that uh, this particular 
application does meet before tests on the Planning Act, I recommend approval subject to uh, the condition that the proposed dwelling be constructed in general accordance with the plans as submitted and further subject to the condition that approval will expire two years from the date of this decision that the proposed development does not proceed or a building permit is not issued. Okay, discussion on recommendation. Seeing none, all those in support, no one opposed that application. Okay, application uh, CAVA 29-2018 at 2251 Bethnal Green Road. Okay. Am I right? This one? Yes. Okay. Um, he's still inside. It's Mr. Mattel. Oh, it is. Eh? Okay, so we'll, we'll just uh, let him finish his and We'll just defer it for a second. Is there anyone here other than the agent? For application CABA 29 2018 at 2251 Bethnal Green Road. Okay, so we'll just hold that down while Mr. Vitalchik does his uh, discussions outdoors. And we'll continue with CABA uh, 31 2018 at 2441 Lakeshore Road West. Good evening, Mr. Chair, uh, members of the committee. My name is David Mackay. I'm a registered professional planner with Lake Mountain Herms and Britain Clarkson Planning Limited. I represent the owners with regards to the variances. Good evening, sir. Um, so just to see, is anyone here other than the agent and presumably your clients on uh, application CAVA 31218 at 2441 Lakeshore Road West? Okay, so uh, staff are satisfied, at least staff are. We'll have to see where we land on this, on one, two, four, and five variants, and they have concern with respect to uh, the depth of the building, I guess, and uh, the uh, step backs. Yes. So, um, so should we concentrate on those, or do you wish to do a? a well, I, I was I was going to suggest, sir. Um, so we met with uh, urban design and planning staff this afternoon at three o'clock uh, after we received the comments. We've been in uh, discussions, obviously, on the site plan for the western portion of the site uh, for some time, and uh, we've had probably about four meetings with them. Uh, before we filed the application for the variances. So we thought we were satisfied on both fronts uh, on those two variances. They are, there's still some concerns outstanding on those ones. So um, those are not, uh, from my client's perspective, are not critical to the development of the property. They're nuanced uh, variances that um, we'd like to work with staff on uh, further to, to see if we can get them on side. I know that your procedure is that you Either it's all or none in terms of an application. So what we're suggesting is with regards to the three and six that we would withdraw those two variances and continue to deal with staff. And if we can't come to a resolution on them, um, we'll have to see where we land on it. But I think we can on it on those. Okay. Um, it may need may need, uh, result in a further application before you, and I apologize for that. But that's the way sometimes uh, things happen. Um, but the other uh, items are fairly critical to the project to get those nailed down and we, we would like to nail those down both for um, construction purposes because we'd like to have the parking resolved significantly that's a big issue for us um, and that would allow for the demolition to, to start because the, those matters would be fixed if the committee chose so chose um, to proceed and grant us those variances so um, with respect, I would request withdrawal of uh, variance three and three variance and six. six and proceed with the other variances, sir. Okay, I, I mean, I think uh, under the circumstance, I think your rationale makes abundance of sense. It's a cautious and prudent approach to proceeding. Uh, members, are you satisfied in accepting revised application to withdraw uh, variance three and uh, six, the two that appear to be the most controversial, and proceed on variance one, two, four, and five? Okay, everyone's not any further. Now, um, we did have some calls on uh, notice on the sovereign side. The notices apparently were not posted. Uh, you know, I'm assuming that you put them up in accordance with the instructions. We did, staff. yes, and I believe we sent yes with yeah. my staff right. bits, and sent we did. pictures. Uh, yes. Yeah. Okay. Just, I mean, we, we we obviously can't control what happens after they go up. We'd like to ensure that they continue to stay up, but. Yes. It's understandable. Did you have something to add to that? Yes, I just, uh, this afternoon I, I got a phone call that the uh, sign is missing, so um, I'm not sure when was 
Don or where was Okay, well, we, we heard from the agent that, uh, and, and the representatives that it was posted, and we have uh, picture proof that it was. And so we just need to be a bit more vigilante about this. Uh, it happens, we understand. Okay, under the circumstances, we're dealing with uh, variants one, two, four, and five. And uh, on that basis, I'm going to poll the members if they wish to have a presentation on this. Uh, do you understand the project? Do you done a site visit? Uh, I, I'd like to add, uh, Ms. Fadlich, is there anything you wish to add? Uh, okay. No. So it would be consistent with sort of the rationale that we have in the planning report. Anyone wishing to speak to the committee? Yes, sir. I'd like to just ask a question. If you'd like to come forward, uh, register your name and address for the record. Yeah. My name is Charles Kirkshank. Uh, my wife and I are residents at 2451 Sovereign Street, directly opposite the future development. Yes. So I guess my question is, I understand that back in, I think it was 2012, there was a decision made, uh, came out from the OMB, yes. or an agreement with the OMB rather, <coughs> excuse me, concerning the development on, on this piece of property. The bylaw may, or the committee adjustments, are, or the adjustments that are being requested here, did they, are these confirmations of what was agreed to at the, with the OMB, or are these over and above what was agreed with by the OMB? Okay, well. If I'm well, using the right terms. <laughs> yeah, so, you, I mean, I think uh, it's a fair question to ask, question one, for variance one, two, four, and five, and we'll have Ms. Fahavlis, because there's, there's not a uniform answer to all of them. Okay. Okay, so. And I guess the rationale behind it is, obviously, if all these are uh, items that are, have been agreed through that agreement, then, you know, it's pointless coming out to the meeting. Well, well let Ms. Pavlis so. give you some, uh, an answer to that. Uh, she's actually did that in her analysis, but I think she can okay. uh, repeat it here. Thanks. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Through, through you to the committee, uh, in response to the request, variances one and two, uh, in our opinion, definitely reflect what was originally intended by the design of the, uh, the proposed property with respect to the conceptual plans that were provided through the minutes of settlement uh, as approved by the Interim Municipal Board. And further, as noted in our comments, um, more recently, Council approved a zoning bylaw amendment that would alleviate the requirements for variances one and two. It is still in its appeal process. Um, however, I'm not aware of any appeals being filed uh, to date. And should that be in full force and effect, variances one and two would not be a required variance for the They'll proposed development. They'll be overcome by the new zoning bylaw. That's correct. Okay. Uh, further, with respect to variance number four, this is an adjustment to the approved uh, Ontario Municipal Board decision with respect to parking. As this committee is well aware, a previous variance application yeah. was submitted to address um, technical issue. error. In this instance, this particular application is actually requesting a, a further reduction in parking, but to be consistent with the standards that would otherwise be applied to any other mixed-use property within Brawny Village area. Okay. The original approval would have required more parking than what we would have currently required today. This, in our comments, we uh, recognize that and accept that that is uh, an appropriate variance uh, to for the appropriate development of the property. So it's bringing it back to its approved state. Correct. Okay. And uh, variance number five? Further, with variance number five, th there are some nuances with respect to this particular variance. The original approval for height of 12 meters for a total number of stories of four stories did not anticipate the required increase in height of the main floor, which the new bylaw has changed to a minimum of 4.5 meters so for the main that story. So presence on the, on the main street with urban design elements of four and a half meter. That's correct. To floor height. Okay. So automatically a request of an increase in height would have been required. Mm -hmm. There are some additional height um, with the subsequent second, third, and fourth floors, and that's to accommodate, as we understand it, uh, different amenity space that had been accommodated within those stories within the building. The effect of the variance is still maintains a four-story structure, which is the maximum number of stories as provided in the decision of the board, and it was our opinion that the increase in height was appropriate to further develop the property and what was intended by the board's decision. So it's the blending of the approval of the board and the new requirements of the zoning by that drove the height up to respect the four and a half meter that's correct okay gotcha sir is that helpful okay thank you okay anyone else wishing to speak to the committee 
Okay, seeing none. Is there anything else to add? Uh, no, Kate's stolen my thunder. So, okay. um, so um, I, no, appreciate, I think it was pretty I well. I, that, and, it was uh, pretty well laid out in the uh, in the report. It was very helpful. It was. So, okay. I'd be happy we'll to answer any questions. Thank you. Happen. We'll take this in the committee, and uh, we'd like to move a recommendation. Thank you, uh, Mr. Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Um, I'll move a recommendation to uh, approve uh, the variances that are before us today. As they do fall in line with the previous decision for you these for the proposed development. Um, I will add that the condition proposed by staff is that the proposed development be constructed in general accordance with the final approved site plan to the satisfaction of the Director of Planning Services. And then our standard condition to the variance is that the approval will expire within two years if the development has not proceeded and or building permit not issued. Okay, discussion on recommendation. See none, all those in support. No one opposed to your application. Thank you. Have a good night. Mr. Mackay, on your way out, can you maybe ask Mr. Matelchik that we're holding an item down? Sure. Just if you don't mind being our carrier pigeon for that note. No problem. Okay, thank you. Application CAB 112 2017. This is a matter that was deferred from our June 27, 2017 meeting at 10 11 Upper Middle Road East. Good evening, sir. Name and address for the record. Eric Spires. I'm uh, one of the owners of Upper Oak Shopping Center. Mr. Spires? Tires. 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 Yeah. My apologies. Is it TI or TY? TY. TY. Mr. Tires. Okay. Um, anyone here this evening have an interest in application CAVA 112 2017 for 1011 Upper Middle Road East? See none. Uh, members have been in your hands. You wish a full presentation. You understand the application. You've done your site visit. I think we've dealt with this uh, property yeah. before, sir. Yeah. Is there anything you wish to add on this? No, there's, uh, this, we've gone through two uh, site plan comments and uh, condition meetings, and this is in essence, uh, we've waited to come back to the Committee of Adjustment to be sure that there are no further adjustments, but there were not. And this is just uh, with uh, a reduction in the distance from the center line to the setback, there's the front yard setback uh, to be consistent with the rest of the shopping center. Okay, thank you. We'll take this back to the committee. Who would like to move a recommendation? Thank you, Mr. Uh, Thank you, Mr. Chair. Mr. Chair, I'll move the application be approved as applied for. Find this to be a minor variance, and by bringing the buildings in line, I don't see any impact. And find it meets the Fort Preston Planning Act. I'll note that there's no opposition from the community. And I'd make the approval subject to development proceeding in general accordance with the final approved site plan and the building permit issue within two years. Uh, yeah, we'll take the condition as noted uh, by staff. The proposed development be constructed in general accordance with the final approved site plan to the satisfactory director of planning services. Okay, thank you. And the standard condition for the building permit. All right, discussion recommendation. Seeing none, all those in support. I guess we should also know for the record there was no one here for any opposition or written. Or did. Did. Okay. <laughs> thank you for uh, repeating that. Thank you, sir. Uh, application uh, CABA 195-2017 uh, for 247 Cardinal Drive. This is a matter that was deferred from our June 21st, 2017 application. Good evening, sir. Good evening. Uh, my name is Dylan Dewsbury from Design Plan Services, and I'm here representing the owners of 247 Cardinal Drive. Okay, is there anyone here this evening that has an interest in application CAVA 195-2017 for 247 Cardinal Drive. Okay, maybe very quickly, uh, tell us uh, the changes that were made between the original application and revised, and then subject to any questions that my uh, members may have, we'll take this matter to committee. Mm -hmm. So after the 21st of November meeting, we met with our staff, including uh, Kate, as well as landscape architect and urban design experts. And the result was a change in the driveway configuration. Uh, so it used to take up more of the front yard exiting over the current curb cut. Okay, yeah. Um, but we've minimized it and made a more direct line to the street. Okay. Uh, which maximizes the soft landscaping as well as protecting the two mature trees there, including the magnolia and the white spruce tree. Okay, perfect, thank you. 
Anyone uh, here this evening have an interest in application CAVA 195 2017 at 247 Cardinal? Drive no members, any questions? Okay, so we'll take this management committee. Thank you for that, Senator. We would like to move a recommendation. Thank you, Mr. Hardcastle. Um, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, having undertaken a site visit, reviewed the staff uh, report, uh, and heard the uh, presentation from uh, the applicant, I'm satisfied that the uh, requested variances conform to the four tests of the Act. I'll put forward a motion of approval, subject to two conditions, the first being that the proposed additions be constructed in general accordance with the plans as submitted, the second being that the approval will expire within two years of the date of the decision if a building permit has not been issued. Okay. I would note that there was no uh, member of the public here to speak to this matter. Thank you. We'll take this matter to committee. Uh, discussion or recommendation? See none. All those in support? No one opposed your application being approved. Thank you. Uh, application CAV 1 of 2018. This was deferred from our January 16, 2018 meeting. This is for 260 Dillard Drive. So is this Mr. Metelchik's as well? No, this is no, Mr. This is Carruthers. Carruthers. Yeah. Is Mr. Carruthers here? No. no. Okay, so why don't we uh, see if we can bring uh, Mr. Metelchik in. Can you? Would, you? would you see if he's available for us? Yes. Okay. Best mode, right? Best mode. Well, I don't know. It's, we don't often uh, have no shows. Okay, we're my, uh, dealing with. My apologies. No, that's fine. Yeah. It's always good to uh, mediate, negotiate, and find solutions on other matters and see what we can do on this one. Uh, CAVA 29 2018 at 2251 Bethnal Green Road. Yes. That's you, sir. May I have for the record? Rick Intelligent um, from SMDA 79 Wilson Street, Suite 301, Wilson Street. Okay, uh, is there anyone here other than Mr. Matelchik that has an interest in application CAVA 29-2018 at 22-51 Bethnal Green Road? Seems like there's no one here. Um, members, you wish your presentation, you've done your site visit, uh, let the staff report. Anything you wish to add, sir? Uh, not at this time, no. All right, we'll take this back into committee. Let's have a recommendation from someone. Thank you, Mr. Mark Shalaba. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Ha having conducted my site visit uh, and uh, read the staff report as well as the application, I do note that there's no one, no one from the public has uh, commented uh, on this particular application. I do find, though, that it does meet the four tests on the Planning Act, recommend that it be approved, subject to uh, the staff condition that the proposed covered rear yard deck be constructed in general accordance with the plans as submitted and subject also to the condition that this approval will expire two years from the state of the bill and permits not been issued. All right, discussion recommendation. See none, all those in support? No, no one opposed, that application has been approved. Thank, thank, you, you. thank okay, you. Okay, we do have, have uh, thank you. yeah, that's fine, thank you. Uh, so what should we do with uh, application CAVA 1, 2018, uh, at 260 Dale Wood Drive? Should we, should we uh, just adjourn for, uh, Two minutes until someone yes. makes a call? Yes, I can. I can okay, here we go. Yeah. Is there a telephone number? Yep. <clears throat> okay. Five, five, one, five, one, two, four, one. Is this a cell number? This is because it's business phone. Okay, we'll see. We'll put him on the speaker. Is there an alternative number that we oh, can he's call? Here. Oh. That's okay, we called you at home, you're not there. <laughs> <laughs>
Okay, yeah, so, so, I, I apologize. so we're dealing with application CMEA 1 of 2018, deferred from our January 16, 2018 meeting at 260 of Iowa Drive. Sir, name and address for the record. David Carruthers, agent for the applicants. And your address, sir? 10, uh, 505 York Boulevard, unit 3, Hamilton, Ontario. Okay, thank you. Um, just for the record, there's no one in the audience, so I'm assuming there's no one here that has an interest in the application. Is there anything you wish to add beyond what we have on the record, sir? No, nothing at this Okay, members, you've done your site visit, you read the staff report, you read, read studied the plans. Is there anything that you wish to clarify, any items that you wish to pursue? If not, we'll take this matter to committee and issue a decision. Who would like to issue this recommendation? Thank you, Ms. Mayhill. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I'll move a recommendation to uh, approve the application um, as submitted. Um, the proposed front porch is in generally in line with the body dwellings. Um, the variances are minor um, and are desirable for the, uh, the development of the site, and there are no impacts. Uh, on the abutting properties. Um, I will note that there is no objection uh, nor support from the staff, uh, from the public either way. Um, staff is in uh, is, uh, in accordance with the application. Uh, I'm going to approve a subject to the condition that the proposed additions be constructed in general accordance with the plans as submitted and that uh, the, the um, approval will expire within two years if the development has not proceeded and or a building permit not issued. Thank you. Discussion on recommendation? Seeing none, all those in support? No one opposed to the application being approved. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, uh, we have the minutes of February 13. Uh, I was not present at that meeting, so uh, who would like to move a recommendation on that? Thank you, Mr. Hardcastle. Uh, any discussion on the uh, minutes? Seeing none, all those in support? Okay, those have been approved. And uh, would you like to proceed with an adjournment motion? Okay, all those in support with the adjournment? All right, we're adjourned at uh, 7.37. I wish I was on one right now. <laughs>